yesterday I had the pleasure of going for a swim early in the morning outside and you know spring that yesterday anyway felt like spring was in the air I could hear the birds the sun the you know brighter longer days are here a bit and um <clears throat> I've been thwarted in my swim practice lately because of the weather you know it seems like every time I'm signed up to swim there's I can't because the storms have been coming so um I really uh anything that we experience that you know we lose a little bit and then we come to experience again we have this beautiful um appreciation for right so i'm sure you all know that feeling of having something lost and then regained and this new sense of appreciation so this is just a, one of my favorite books to bless the space between us by john donahue um i've read from this before <clears throat> and then the other one i'm going to read from is the Tao. So, um, but I want to talk about water in general. Um, and so even if you're not a lover of the pool, um, I'm sure you're a lover of water. And um, I think when we start to invite spring in, um, water is one of the elements that we're inviting um, because of the moisture that needs to happen for spring to arrive. So this is in praise of water. <clears throat> Let us bless the grace of water the imagination of the primeval ocean, where the first forms of life stirred and emerged to dress the vacant earth with warm quilts of color. The well whose liquid root worked through the long night of clay, trusting ahead of itself openings that would yield to its yearning until at last it arises in the desire of light to discover the pure quiver of itself flowing crystal clear and free through delighted emptiness. The courage of a river to continue belief in the slow fall of ground, always falling further toward the unseen ocean. The river does what words would love, keeping its appearance, but insisting on disappearance. It's only life surrendered to the events of pilgrimage Carrying the origin, the, sorry, carrying the origin to the end, seldom pushing or straining, keeping itself to itself, everywhere, all along its flow, all at one with its sinuous mind, an utter rhythm, never awkward. It continues to swirl through all unlikeliness with elegance, a ceaseless traverse of presence, soothing on each side the stilled fields, surrounding out its journey, raising up a buried music where the silence of time becomes almost audible. Tides stirred by the eros of the moon draw from that permanent restlessness, perfect waves that languidly rise and pleat in gradual forms of aquamarine to offer every last tear of delight at the altar of stillness inland. And the rain in the night, driven by the loneliness of the wind to perforate the darkness as though some air pocket might open to release the perfume of the lost day and salvage some memory from its forsaken turbulence and drop its weight of longing into the earth and anchor. Let us bless the humility of water, always willing to take the shape of, of whatever otherness holds it. The buoyancy of water, stronger than the deadening downward drag of gravity. The innocence of water, flowing forth without thought of what awaits it. The refreshment of water, dissolving the crystals of thirst. Water, voice of grief, cry of love in the flowing tear. Water, vehicle and idiom of the inner voyaging that keeps us alive. Blessed be water, our first mother. So <clears throat> on top of beautiful poetry about water, the Tao simplifies, right? And this is where we enter into our practice. Nothing in the world is as soft and yielding as water. 
yet for dissolving the hard and inflexible, nothing can surpass it. The soft overcomes the hard, the gentle overcomes the rigid. Everyone knows this is true, but few can put it into practice. Therefore, the master remains serene in the midst of sorrow. Evil cannot enter his heart because he has given up helping. He is his people's greatest help. True words seem paradoxical. So whatever piece of those <clears throat> spoke to you, I'm sure there's a little nugget in there somewhere, right? Um, let's close our eyes and remember how much we are made up of water. That most of our being is this fluid, malleable space. Now, as you ground yourself on your mat or on your chair or on your seat, can you feel <clears throat> that you're a combination of solid and fluid? And this sense of the strength of water, that the gentleness and flow can move more than the hard rock. So can you allow that sense of fluidity to enter into your skin, into the center of your bones? Not just the obvious, you know, visualization of your blood vessels or your lymph, the fluids moving, but know that each cell is just an ocean in and of itself. And within this deep medium of water that we are <clears throat> lies so much that our capacity to both be soft and hard, fluid and steady, really lives within this medium. Can you feel the elements within you, the sense of air moving through your body, the sense of water being what you're made of, the sense of earth, the solidness of you as well. And the sense of fire, this strength not only of will, but your metabolism, your heat. Let's just have a moment to realize that we are the elements. And we can harness the power of these elements in any way we desire. So how do you want to harness the element of water today? Do you need the power? Do you need the flow? Do you need the stillness? Do you need the quenching? Let's place the hands at the heart and offer an intention for your practice. What do you need? And then release the hands and let's come on to our back. And so as you find yourself coming onto your mat, just notice as you lie down, can you feel the how things dissipate differently? Do you notice the change in the effect of gravity? Do you notice the change in the spaciousness of your joints? So in this gentle yoga class, let's allow ourselves to be kind of fluid. So melt your body down. When we try to discover the magic of yielding, which is way different than collapse, way different than propping, um, yielding has some water in it, 
know, yielding has a sense of moving with the flow. So see if you can yield your whole body into the earth. Feel that kind of rebound of what the earth gives you. So there's a living exchange between what's below you and you. And then come into the fluidity of your breath. And know that even your oxygen, this air, this breath, this prana that we breathe in is carried to ourselves on a river of water. That our hemoglobin on our red blood cells travels in the sea, the river in our blood vessels to get to every cell. In praise of water, stretch your arms overhead and start to invigorate your body. See what it feels like, what kind of movements do you want right now? in your body. Do you want to kind of move left to right with stretching one arm overhead and then the other? What's feeling good? Breathe deeply. And then bring your knees into your chest and give yourself a hug. Okay, rock around a little bit. Sway from side to side. And then circle. And just notice the bones. You know, when you feel your pelvis and your sacrum on the ground here, go the other direction. Can you also know that inside your bones is a whole lot of water? You know, even your bone cells have a lot of water in them. So try to melt even your hardest things, your bones, into a state of pliability, malleability. Okay, let's open up the knees and bring them back in. So can you feel both the balance of the hard and the soft, that you have the sense of fluidity, of fluidity available to you? Let your breath be the magic that teaches you that sense of fluidity. Right knee into the chest, wiggle around your feet. And then switch, left knee into the chest, right leg long and wiggle around your feet again. And now stretch your limbs, reaching into your fingertips and toes, wiggle them. Exhale, knees in, chest in. Take a breath, expand open. Exhale, draw in. One more time. Feel the spaciousness, feel the compression. All right, relax your head down. And bring your arms out to the side, two feet on the ground, hip width apart, and let's flow our knees left and right. And try to pay attention to um, what fluidity of movement feels like in your body. Can you match movement and breath? And that doesn't mean you have to inhale, move, exhale, move. Not, not that kind of rigidity, but just notice the flow of breath and notice the flow of movement. What kind of harmony do those two things seek with each other? When you keep rocking from side to side over a course of, you know, a little longer than we, we sometimes do here, what's easing up? What is becoming softer? All right, now we haven't done this in a while. And some of you might never have done this with me, but we're, um, this is best done on a wood floor. So I don't know if you have that. I don't have that capacity here to do this and have you see me. But if you do, it's a nice, it's really nice to do this on a wood floor. So we're gonna stretch out like a starfish, okay? And then we're gonna um, come onto our side, but kind of drape yourself over onto your side instead of, you know, like flinging yourself. And then we're gonna open ourselves up Kind of like letting the body just be very lang um, languid and fluid and then roll over onto the other side. So we're kind of trying to get the feeling of being a little slithery on the ground as we roll from one side into a little ball and then open back up your limbs and roll to the other side. So if you look at me for a moment, this is very different than this where we pull ourselves over into a ball and bring ourselves out. We just want to kind of let the body drape onto its side and then drape back. So 
it's like I said, not so easy to do this on sticky mats. So if you do have the capacity to be on a stretch of wood floor um, or your kitchen floor, even if you're not doing it right now, try this sometime when you're just in the mood for being slithery and liquidy on the floor. It feels really nice. Make sure you're breathing. Okay. All right, and then go ahead and relax and put your feet down onto the ground and pause here for a minute. You can also have your legs straight. Take a deep breath and just notice if you're a little more in touch with your softer side. If you have that capacity to find ease in your body. Fluid joint space. Long exhales. Deep relaxation. Now try yielding again. Is it easier to give way? And then come rolling over onto your side and come up onto your hands and knees. So we're going to find our way into um, some cat cows. So as you as you discover cat cows, um, try to now awaken that movement rhythm does happen with breath rhythm. So as you uh, find the movement of the spine, let the breath guide you there. See if the breath can become fluid. Try to imagine your favorite body of water, whether it's a flowing river or an ocean or a lake or your bathtub or the water coming out of your kitchen sink or the rain dropping from your roof or the puddles or the ice or the snow, anything that is your favorite um, body of water that you're visualizing right now. Let's just kind of stay with that and then Feel yourself move in all sorts of directions. So you can sway from side to side. You can move your pelvis in some circles. Let there be any kind of fluid range of motion in your spine that you want. So it's amazing how much different types of movement our spine is capable of. So enjoy. And then stretch back towards child's pose when you're ready. If child's pose is not available because your knees or your hips um, are have a little bit difficult time, just go as far down as your body says to go. And if it's not relaxing, try putting your forearms on the ground so that you can have a little bit of ease as you reach back um, with your hips. Okay, if it's comfortable, walk the hands over to the left, finding the right ribs open and broaden. Step just a slight touch away from your max end point of stretch today. And notice when we, when we hold just a slightly less stretched out space, is there more room for breath to be pliable? Is your body a little bit more mobile? And then come over to the other side and stretch through there. Feel a sense of openness through the rib cage. Let the breath travel open into those ribs. Is there softness? If you, you know, especially if you tend to be kind of a type A and you really push, 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 can you discover the softness in your practice today? Come on to all fours, take your left leg straight back behind you and the right arm out in front of you. Stabilize, so feel your strength, your solidity, and then let's move through that. Extend on your inhale, and as you exhale, draw the elbow and knee underneath you. Inhale. Bringing the movement out. And exhale, bringing the movement in. And then reach out one more time. Place that hand and knee down onto the ground and change sides. Remember, if your wrists are not happy, you can always take a forearm onto a block to do this. You can take a fist onto the ground to do this. You can stand up and do this holding on to a table where you know you're not as bound by the floor. So remember there's ways to modify every single thing you're doing. Let's take the other side. Left leg out, right arm forward. Take a deep breath in, feel your stability. And as you exhale, hug in and feel your fluidity, your mobility. Move with breath. 
Can you balance and feel both strength and mobility simultaneously? One more time. Reach that out. Place the hand and foot down. If you're able, come into dog pose. You can always do half dog against a wall. If your shoulders, your wrists, or hands are unable to be in dog pose, or if you can't invert so low, feel the femur bones lift up and back. Feel free to pedal here. So dropping one heel down, then the other, stretching through your legs. You can bend a knee. Come into this mobility as best as you can. Deep breaths here. How is your breathing keeping you in that fluid state? And then walk your feet forward. Come into Uttanasana, fold, bend your knees. Feel free to swivel around. You can wag your tail, shake out your shoulders, move your neck around. Inhale for a halfway lift. The spine grows taller. Exhale and melt again. Push off your feet, rise up, bringing the arms to the sky. Open up your chest and then cactus open the arms. Feel the chest open and broaden and then release the arms down. Shake out your shoulders, shake out your wrists, shake out your hands. Take a deep breath. And Bounce just a little bit. So we're not leaving the floor, we're not jumping, but just have um, that sense of vibration moving through your body. Okay, it can be little, little bounces or big bounces. Okay, just feel what it feels like. You're a bag of water, right? So when you're shaking like this, when you're bouncing like this, can you feel that you can become a little bit softer? Okay, and then relax, come to your stillness. Close your eyes and feel your body. Do you have any, you know, new sensation? Is there any zing happening or liveness happening within you? Take a deep breath in, reach the arms up. Exhale and fold forward. Come into a Uttanasana. Halfway lift, it's the spine extends, opening things up. Feel the sit bones lift and reach. Exhale and melt. Try not to hold the breath. So whatever you're doing, you can breathe with movement. You can stay still with move, with breath, but just see what it feels like to not let your breath stop, even if your movement stops. All right, now let's step our left foot back, right foot comes forward to a lunge. This is such a great part of our flow. So feel the heart open. And then we're going to exhale and square the hips, tuck the chin toward the chest. You know, a lot of times the way I teach keep moving is not a vinyasa flow based. You know, we're not one breath, one movement a lot in my class. We hang out and explore and align and we flow. <clears throat> but today we're going to just move a little bit gently, but we're going to move a little bit through our practice. So just see what it feels like to have your body be fluid. Whatever the range of motion is available to you is where you stay. Doesn't matter how deep into places you go, see if you can stay in the fluidity of your breath. All right, come to a lunge. Steady yourself, bring your hands up onto your hips if it feels nice. Lift your heart. Even though your body is still, flow the breath. We're gonna do some arm movements here. So open up the chest to a cactus if your body lets that happen. And then exhale, head and round in. Inhale, open up. This could be a challenge for your balance. Exhale, round in. Next breath, arms up if you're able. Exhale, arms back. Let's stay here for a moment. Breathing deeply and place the hands down onto the ground, onto the blocks and walk your back foot forward. Fold in half, inhale for a halfway lift. Deep breath, exhale while you're here. Let's just pause. So we're gonna go slow enough where we don't get dizzy, but we're gonna try to keep moving a little bit with our breath, even if it's subtle movement. 
See what's flowing with breathing. Take your left foot forward, right foot back. Come into a lunge on this side. Open up your chest, find your footing. Where is your yielding? Okay. All right, and then let's square the hips, tuck the chin toward the chest. Bending the knee as your chest comes forward. Straightening your leg a bit as your chest stays long, but your head bowed. Where do you like to inhale and exhale in this rhythm of the body? There's no rights or wrongs. Feel what feels natural to you. What kind of movement pattern is natural to you? All right, come into a lunge. So if you're a little wobbly, you know, if you feel like you have to reach down or have some support, you go ahead and do that. Remember, you can be very lightly bent, you can deeply bend. So find just what's right for you, hands on your hips, open the chest, enjoy the hip flexor stretch of that back leg, extend through the spine, yield into your feet, relax your shoulders, find the fluid breath. Is there a part of your body that feels rigid and hard? Can you feel stable and fluid? Let's open up the arms to a cactus if you're comfortable. There's always ways to modify this in all sorts of ways. Exhale, and round your chest in. Inhale, open the chest. This is a challenge for balance, so don't fret if you get a little off kilter. And then reach the arms up, extend through the spine. Exhale, lean forward, arms coming back behind you. Find the breath. Okay. We're going to put our hands down onto the ground and step back to dog pose. Feel the openness through your whole body. Enjoy this pose. So as the head drops down, feel the exhales. Stay in the fluidity. Come forward into a plank, put your knees down, okay? Finding your way all the way to the floor as you're ready. So just get down there safely. And if the floor is not available to you, there's so many variations. Take a deep breath in, cobra pose, exhale. This is a place where we often hold our breath. So let's try to be very mindful that we flow with breath. Inhaling to come up. The body is stable. We're not going to our end point. Exhale and come back down. Let's try one more. All right, come back up onto all fours. You can always come onto forearms or forearms on blocks if your wrists are not okay. Feel free to swish and sway your spine. Come into the movement of your breath. Okay, we're gonna come up to stand. So you can come into dog pose if you want, or you can just get yourself up to stand. However, you like to come into this posture. Okay, we're gonna take our legs wide apart. Okay, well, most of you have done this with me before. We're gonna turn our feet out just a little bit. We're going to um, go from one, we're going to do this two different ways. First, we're just going to go side to side, and then we're going to do it in kind of circles. So let your arms be a little fluid. And if your knees do not like squatting, it's okay. Just go a little bit. So you don't have to go very far for this to become very fluid in the body. See what it feels like to yield into one foot and then to yield into the other foot. Are you going with your breath? Feel the weight transfer through your pelvis from one side to the other. Go as slow or as fast as you want. Change the pattern of your arm movement to whatever feels good to you. And come back to center. Bring your feet to the midline. So hip width apart. We're going to come into that two tadasana and practice this art of yielding. So yielding is the balance point between collapse and prop. 
So Tadasana is a good place to practice the extremes. So first, let's try to prop ourselves away from the earth. Try to get yourself off the ground. So lift yourself up. Try to lift, lift, lift. And notice what happened to your breath. Probably you lost your breath. Just hang out here just a little bit longer. And notice what happened to your fluid body self. So you lose a little bit of your fluid body self. And then relax that, let that propping go. And now come into collapse, fall toward the earth. So not being very self-supporting, lock your joints. See what it feels like to just sink, okay? And this also cannot feel very life-giving. There's not a lot of breath, there's not a lot of flow. So just go back and forth between those two for a moment. Feel yourself prop, feel yourself collapse. And I know you've done this before, but it's good to remember um, where we tend to go. You know, do we rid how do we become rigid? Do we become rigid in this holding ourselves up, propping, or do we become rigid in the calcification of, um, you know, total collapse? So see where your tendencies lie. Maybe your tendencies lie in both. And now find the middle way. Just find the middle way. This is the way of the Tao. This is the flowing river the way that water is stronger than rock. Can you feel this in your body? Can you yield into the earth? Can you rebound and feel the energy move up through your feet into your body all the way to your crown? Can you feel energy from your crown all the way down to your feet? You are a conduit, you are a river of flow, of prana. So find where your blocks are. Are your knees locked out? Is your diaphragm tight? Are your shoulders tense? Are, are your shoulders tense? Do you collapse the chest? Do you push the chest? Where are your, um, you know, eddies that you kind of come off that river of flow? How is your breath? What does it feel like to align? To have that sense that your energy is aligned through your spine, that you are centered over, your weight is centered over your feet well, that you feel those conduits of energy moving through you. Nothing's locked out, self-supporting, connecting to, you are self-supporting, but you're self-supporting because you're connected. All right, so let's stay in this feeling of yielding instead of propping or collapsing as best as you can breathe and stay in the yielding inhale reach the arms up to the sky exhale and bend your knees a lot and float down halfway lift exhale and melt again push up your feet rise up again take your feet wide on the mat one more time turn the feet out a little bit and now we're going to move through a circle through this. So with that feeling of yielding, I want you to get the sense that when you lean into one foot, you're giving to the earth. And when you push off that foot, the earth is giving back to you. So be in the flow. So instead of just going side to side, we're going to do a circle. Okay, so moving into the right foot, crossing over into the left, circling your upper body up. And your arms and legs do what they can. So whatever your knee and hip range of motion allows, whatever your shoulder range of motion allows, you stay in that range. So concentrate on that feeling of giving yourself to the earth, feeling that transfer and moving off the earth. Yield the whole way. What are your shoulders doing? What is your diaphragm doing? What are your knees doing? So pay attention to the feeling in the soles of your feet. Stay in the flow. Okay, come back around. Maybe the arms come up, maybe the arms come out. Pause for a moment. If you're at all dizzy or lightheaded, make a different adjustment in your movements as we come to the other direction. So we're now moving into the left and transferring over to the right. And on up. You can go deep. You can go shallow. Okay. The key here is to use your core, use your strong legs, feel that yielding into the earth, feel the rebound off the earth. 
Move with your breath, stay in your flow. All the way down to your fingertips, stay in your flow. And then pause in a goddess, and you can be in a high goddess, you can be in a low goddess. Your hands can be anywhere that you want them to be. Okay, so there's lots of choices of how to be in this posture. See if you can yield a bit. Where can you relax? Are your shoulders soft? Breathe deeply. And then push off your feet and straighten your legs. Come back to the front of your mat for another dog pose, extending through your spine. Relax and melt into the um, inversion that's here. Remember, if you're not able to do dog pose, maybe one arm, half dog, depending on what your shoulder is doing. There's lots of choices. Okay, come back onto a plank and come onto your knees. Find your breath. We're gonna inhale and lift the left arm up in the air. Exhale and release that shoulder down. Find the breath. Notice the breath in the back body. And inhale, reach that arm back up again and down onto the ground. Let's switch sides. Right arm up, exhale, slide it under. Find the flow of your breath, yield into the earth here. And then inhale and reach that arm all the way back up and come back to child's pose. Breathe deeply, relax for a moment. Okay, last pass through some standing poses. We're gonna grab our two blocks, come on to all fours and bring the right foot forward. Find the lunge again, so back knee comes off the floor. Take a deep breath in, heart comes forward. Exhale, straighten the leg a little bit, drop your chin. Inhale, come forward, hop up onto your right foot, hands on blocks, extend the spine, lift that leg in the air. Take a deep breath in, exhale, and bring the knee next to the knee or behind the knee. Inhale, push off, extend the spine, engage glutes, exhale, Draw in one legged squat. It doesn't matter how far you go, yield, push off the earth as you extend the leg. Exhale, yield again. One last time. And then put your foot down next to the other foot. Extend the heart here, step the right foot back, come into a lunge. Take a deep breath in. Exhale, square hips. Inhale, knee bends again. Exhale, straighten your legs. Come into a lunge, hop up onto your blocks, hands on whatever height they need to be on. Square the hips, lift that leg in the air. Deep breath. Exhale, knee next to knee or behind knee, yield. Feel the flow, stretch into the length. Exhale, drop into the squat. Doesn't matter how deep you go, be in the breath. Let's do one more. And then place that foot down next to the other foot, Uttanasana. Bend your knees, come down onto the floor, come all the way down on your back. Starfish out your body, limbs are wide. Take a deep breath, exhale, head in, knees in. One more time, expand open. Exhale, knees into your chest. And release your body down onto the ground. Pause here for a moment. Notice a different quality of yielding. So as we come um, with our back on the floor, our spine resting on the ground, 
can you give yourself over? And even here, can you feel the difference between a collapse and a yield? A yield has, you know, it's it's a little less obvious than when we're standing, but yield, yielding has some exchange to it. It's a two-way street. We give and we take. We give and we receive rather than take. So feel the dynamic movement of breath. The dynamic nature of an exchange with the earth, with gravity, with the prana you're breathing in. We're going to come back to that first pose we did where we were just windshield wipering our knees left and right. And just see what it feels like to um, breathe and move. We're going to move through some flowing bridge poses here. So the feet are going to be down on the ground, knees are bent. And we're going to lift our arms up over our head as we lift the pelvis. And then lower the pelvis down, arms coming down. Start to notice what it feels like to, well, we've already been feeling it, but to continue feeling how the breath and movement work together. Can you imagine all the fluidity that you are, every one of your trillions of cells in your body is mostly made up of water. Can you feel the ocean within you? Can you feel the rivers within you? Can you let the air that you're breathing in be a river too? And relax, melt your body for a moment, yield again. And then have a few more rounds of the windshield wipering left and right. You get to decide, you get to decide which kind of hip stretch you want to do. You can cross uh, right thigh over left thigh, or you can put right foot on top of left knee. And we're going to come either into reverse pigeon pose or um, gamakasana legs on your back where your thigh is over your thigh. So you decide which hip stretch feels best for your body right now. And if you need some support underneath your head, go ahead and take that. Uh, whatever is working for you. If you're in reverse pigeon pose, you can either grab behind your thigh or the front of your shin. If you're grabbing the front of your shin, be very mindful of what your neck, the base of your skull, and your shoulders are doing. Just so try to stay soft. Deep breaths here. Let's see what it might feel like to move a little bit. Maybe you want to sway <clears throat> from side to side. Maybe a little circling. What feels nice for your body? Okay. I'm going to unwind that. Stretch two legs straight for a moment. And then we're going to come to the other side. So you can either choose to put your left thigh over your right thigh and draw in and grab your knees or your shins somewhere. Or you can put your left foot on top of your right knee and reach back to interlace your fingers behind your hamstring on that right side or the right shin. So you decide where you're going to be. Another great way of doing reverse pigeon pose is to put your foot, your right foot on a chair, a couch, a wall, a table, something, because then you don't even need your arms and you can yield that much more. So just discover what's available to your body right now. How's your breath? Can you yield your spine? 
And then feel free to move a little bit if your body wants to move, see what movement feels like. And then relax and take your foot down. Stretch your legs straight. Have your limbs in a comfortable place. And then rock your whole leg from the femur bone on down. So toes toward each other and then toes um, turning away from each other. And just let that rocking of internal and external rotation happen all the way from the hip joints. Go ahead and bend your knees. We're going to roll right over onto your right side. Make it, you can put a blanket under your head if you need it, or a block if you need some support underneath your head. And we're going to take everything at right angles. So the palms are together, the knees are stacked, the ankles are stacked, everything at right angles. So the knees are right angle to the hips, ankles right angle to the knees. Take a deep breath once you're here. Open up into a twist. Arm opening, and then close the book. Palms coming back together. So if you need um, a pillow or something underneath your head, a blanket, a block, take whatever support you need so that you're comfortable here. Sometimes it's hard having your head dangle. And we're just opening the book. I get a little stuck because my furniture. Hopefully you have a big open space to do this. Close the book. Breathing as you go. All right, and then go left of this next last one. Come on to your back before we move to the second side. Find the sense of neutral for a moment. Okay, and then we're going to come over onto your left side. Support underneath your head with a pillow if you need it. Palms are open. On top stacked, everything's at right angles. So your your knees are bent at right angles, your hips are bent at right angles. Take a deep breath in, open up your book. Exhale, close your book. Your arm is going to open, your chest broadens. Feel that twist. And on the exhale, coming back, palm over palm. Feel the flow. And then release and relax and pause here on your side for a moment. Take a deep breath. And then we're going to come back onto our back. Bring your knees to your chest for a moment and rock a little bit left and right. Last pass through the, the um, starfishes that we always do in the beginning of class. And when we do this, feel that expansion from your navel out to your edges, and then from your edges back in to your center. Feel your spine, your limbs, everything opening, and then everything closing. One more time. Like a wave, we're expanding open and then we're pleading inward. All right, and then relax. Bring your body flat onto the ground. And as we prepare for Shavasana, we're gonna do a little guided meditation as we go in here, but adjust now. So if you want props underneath your head or knees, if you're cold and want a blanket on top of you or put your socks on or whatever, make the changes now so that when you come onto your back, you're at peace, at ease. And then as you find yourself um, coming onto the ground, once you get settled, first just explore yielding again. Just sense into what it feels like to yield the body. It's a very different feeling um, 
then propping up, right? We, we don't have to hold ourselves up so much when we are horizontal. So as you feel yourself yield into the earth, also feel that gravity is a blanket over you. So you're sandwiched, you're supported by the energy of the earth below you and the gravity blanket above you. Have this um, be comforting. So feel into the comfort of that support and find your way into your breath. See if you, when you close your eyes, you can let your breath be the ocean. So this rising tide of the inhale and the exhale is like a swell on an ocean wave. Can you allow your whole body to be the breathing vesicle? So it's not, uh, or vessel, it's not, um, it's not just the nose and it's not just the lungs. Imagine that your whole being receives your breath. You are a vessel to receive prana. And same on the way out when the breath leaves, you get to drop into that surrender. So the breath, even though it is the element of air, becomes the fluidity of water. Can you feel not only this uh, deep sense of the breath being in your whole body, your whole being, but that all your joints are free. Every joint in your body has a fluid capsule around it, your synovial fluid. Can you let the watery lakes around your joints be spacious and still. Feel the flowing tide of your breath. Feel the deep lakes in your joints. Imagine raindrops on your skin that are just falling, warm, releasing. Maybe conjure up the sound of water, your favorite sound of water, rain, waves crashing, trickling water, raging rivers. Whatever is your favorite water sound, conjure. Imagine the flowing rivers inside you, the rivers of your blood, the rivers of your lymph. Carrying everything you need, everything you're ready to release. Feel the slow tide, the slow river of your cerebral spinal fluid. Wrapping, cushioning your brain, your spinal cord. Having its own flow. And lastly, besides the sound of water, the ocean tide of the breath, the river tide of the vessels, the rain of your skin. Besides all these mediums of water, now let's get right into the deep exchange of your cellular respiration. Every cell giving and receiving what it needs through the medium of water. So can you find this very smooth, graceful exchange that happens between your cells and the space around your cells?
complete the meditation, the visualization, just by once again returning back to the wave of your breath, the ocean tide, this full body rhythm of movement that's very fluid. And let this release you back into the yielding of that feeling of gravity and the earth holding you, cradling you. Release into Shavasana, letting your thoughts dissipate and relax. Just feel your body at rest. begin deepening our breathing again. Find your way back into a little bit of movement, whatever movement works for you. Eventually coming onto your side, take your time. As you come up to sit, notice the change when you are upright. Can you yield again? Can you feel the flow again? 
And when you're ready, bring your palms together at your heart. And let's offer this energy, this fluid energy that can so easily um, be transmitted. So let's offer our energy to another. Send your love, your care, your prayers to someone in need. Namaste. Thank you, everyone.